Raisins are in for a walloping. No points for sleeping. What can I do? I'll be chopping you to chum, chum. Speak freely. Huh. Cut that yes. out. As you wish. Oh, good. <laughs>
Oh? Captain? Ah. Tell me. Yes? Yes? As I said, is tell me. Mercy! This is futile! I cannot move! Really? Toss me a pyre, will you? What? I'm no actor. And besides, I can't barely see nothing as it is. You really think so? Maybe I do have a mug made for the stage. I sure got the voice for it, eh? Turn me in the right direction, and I'll make me way to the Radiant Court. Stage is this way, ain't it? Uh, 
Welcome back, patron. I'd be happy to go back working for her, except I owe Harker over there a good deal of money. Stupid dice went cold at the wrong time. Until I pay him what I owe, 700 pyres, I'm not going anywhere. Talk it over with Harker. Maybe you'll be feeling generous. A more likely possibility is he'll try and put a knife between your ribs. Assuming he doesn't, or you survive it, you ought to know he hides his money in his private quarters. Would be a shame if someone stole it. My never-ending debt to Harker. Every time I manage a payment, the interest has gone and doubled. You haven't heard the rumors, I take it. Some people say he's the Red King. Aye, I'd heard that too. But some folks say he faked his death to escape the wrath of the Valian Republics. Those same folks say that Harker was the Red King. I wouldn't go on asking him about it, if you know what I mean. Harker's got a nasty reputation, a real violent disposition, and besides, people in this port generally don't like others prying into their past. What can I do for you? Infamous to his enemies, famous to his friends. Folks decided to call me the Red King. I had nothing to do with that. But I didn't tell them to stop, neither. See, the Valian Republics drove my dar out of business. And I repaid them in kind by taking their ships and their treasure. A whole lot of them. Got right tired of ship hunters crawling up my ass every time I went out to sea. So I paid off my crew, scuttled this ship here, and went my merry way. In other words, the Red King is dead. And if you ask me any more about it, you will be too. Sure do. And at a generously discounted price too. 250 pies. What can I do for you? What do you want? What can I do for you? Be careful you don't get any of it in your eyes. Burns like a mother. Oh, burns like you wouldn't believe. Wouldn't wish that sting on anybody. Not even my worst enemy. Actually, yeah. Yeah, I would. Got to you, did she? The woman can spot a soft-hearted mark from 50 paces. Like a sixth sense or something. Remarkable. Here's the thing, though. It's more profitable for me to keep her under my thumb. So, sweet as your offer is, you can keep the money. Unless there's something else you need, I think we're done here. That's a shrewd observation. Maybe you're not so easy a mark after all. Tierna's free to go. Endless thanks for taking care of my debt. See you at the play.
at once. Happily. Damn, my God! Just kill me now! Lost my God's damn soul in stupidity! Andre, save me now! Oh. oh, God, he's coming out of the other end now. Oh, now, if you'll excuse me, I need a change of bottoms. Well, well, if it isn't Arca's new business partner, that's quite a lot of coin you two exchanged. Right, we all know Arca's been itching to come out of retirement and claim a bigger slice of dunnage for himself. I in a seat on a council, I bet he is. Think I'll send him your head as a reminder to stick to selling grog and flea infested beds. I'm listening. For the homeland! Oh? Good. Tell me. 
may I help? Ha! Captain. For the homeland. What can I do? Yes, my friends, the stuff. Tell me. Yes? They'll fall by my hand. Captain. What can I do? As you wish. Try a different position. Tell me. <clears throat> that was horrible. How may I help? They'll fall by my hand. Speak freely.
thanks muchly for bringing Tayana back to us. Her storm and weather spells will really strike an atmosphere for the play. And now that we've got a real big brute for Aethys, we can put on a proper play. Stick around for the performance. I think you'll be plenty pleased. <laughs> Ladies and gentle pirates, and rapscallions too, you are in for the truest of mental treats. Without further ado, I present the Green Menace. Let us begin with our valiant new blood crews. The Lusty Rudder and Fortune's Folly. Two ships adrift at sea. On a venture most daring, in search of the uncharted islands. Woe and torture, months at sea with no treasure to show for it. You sure these uncharted islands exist, Captain? We ain't seen land for days. Were they easy to find, they'd be called the Chartered Islands, wouldn't they? If you're thinking to mutiny... Land ho! Land ho! Got a lumpy-looking island coming on the horizon! That's no island! That be the Green Menace! We're doomed for sure! Souls and gold and glory! You will give these to me! For I am a god among gods, and a true menace upon the seas. Souls and gold and glory. Blame the dawn stars, for they have summoned me. And now, I must feed. This will be the end for us, it will. Oh, Andra, take me now. And that's the story of how Aethus sank a fleet of our best Tars. Like the floating hangman, you see the green menace coming, you sail the other way. Thank you. Donations and gratuity are greatly appreciated. You're they telling me they don't get to shoot them or they anything? They gods damned loved us thanks to you. Thanks again for your help. We couldn't have done it without you. Much ado to you, Casita. A word of advice. Guard your back in Dunwich. You have not yet carved a name for yourself or your crew. Yet you choose to swim in a sea of sharks. Should one take a bite, the Consuelo will not intervene. Elsewise, how might I be of assistance? 
Yes, our Council of Captains. There are seven seats on the Consuelo, each occupied by a high-ranking captain within the Principe. Seat holders convene to vote on a variety of issues concerning the Principe's well-being. To claim a seat, a captain must have substantial backing and sufficient power both politically and physically. Ferrante, the last Marchesso, holds the highest ranking seat because the most ships in our entire fleet have pledged loyalty to his flag. As you can guess, the Sea Wolf, Aldis, commands the second most numerous fleet of ships. As such, she is the second chair and I am the third. Perhaps you would like to attend the proceedings when the Consuelo next convenes. You have my ear, Casita. Of what do you wish to discuss today? You may have noticed a divide between old blood and the new, by which I mean those who descended from or otherwise hold old Valia in grand esteem, and the varied and often uncouth recruits we have since brought into the fold. I assure you, the latter was supremely by necessity, though perhaps I am ill-equipped to throw stones. As a casita of some repute, you will be most welcome in the king's coffin, but you should watch yourself throughout the radiant court. I met Ferrante decades ago. Many years I sailed as his first mate before building my own humble fleet. When in the Principe, do as the Valians do. Unless, of course, you have no care for tradition or the continued sustainability of our way of life, like some filthy new blood. discreet. What have we here? Ah, Watcher. Good, you have arrived. Ahoy there yourself, Captain. Or do I be but a pretty bit of man-meat to dangle from a wrist? As easily forgotten as set aside. I know that dimple. Had you in my sights once, but you've been down to lace your boot. It's the ones who get away that hurt the most. A coincidence, surely. A little seabird informs me that you have dealt with our mutual problem, the scoundrel Benoit. I must admit, I did not expect you to leave him alive, but I think it a shrewd decision. Whatever understanding you come to, I do believe could prove advantageous for us in the future. Gelarde, for this you have my grandest commendation. No, as my memory serves me, you did not. And as promised, I have prepared for you a fine prize. 
However, there is another matter of which we must now speak. I must confess to you a bit of a problem has arisen, one which speaks to your expertise with the supernatural. We've sighted the floating hangman that haunts the Deadfire. It would seem I have undervalued you, Watcher. I will not mince words, as you undoubtedly know what we are up against. This galleon, what likely remains of the Von Ferrus, is a frightful legend. We have been losing ships at sea, Amika, and not to those Valera ship-hunting bastards. I believe the floating hangman may be our culprit. Fortune favors us, as I have procured a survivor from such a recent sinking. You will consider what she has to say. Come forth, Selenia. Quickly now, or I will run rivers of your lethargic blood. Well, spit it out, Selenia, and try not to embarrass me before our guest. Of course, Captain. It might be pretty hard near the end, but I spit the tale as best as I can. Go on, Mum. Ready as I'm like to get me. quite what I expected, Watcher. You're... kinder than most. Saw my old crew slaughtered me, my best mates, and even a few I hated. They weren't but blood and meat in the end. It branded the back of my eyes that moment. High seas. Nothing but blue all around. Then... Mist so thick you could taste it. Ships sailed from within. Out of nowhere was a hunt, not for loot, but for bodies. The ship, it looked... Rotted. The crew, they were all undead. Couldn't stop them from boarding. Couldn't kill them. Couldn't even fight them in the end. They were dreadful. Some were clothed, like maybe they'd only recently died. Others weren't more than moving bones. One was different. Her presence was overwhelming. Heavy. Flames burned in the place of her eyes. The crew shambled hard to do her bidding, even the ones who seemed hardly aware. Figured she was the captain, me. There is a flag the floating hangman flies. A flag that once heralded the Von Ferris of Old Velia. It belonged to our Darkutsi paladin of some legend, one Lucia Rivan. But Selenia's knowledge is limited in this regard. Let us instead ask her of a subject she may know. Deny me. Drifted for days, maybe longer. Kept winking in and out after I ran out of drink. One of mine found her no more than a week ago. Malnourished, dehydrated. The poor girl was scarcely able to speak. Well, I'm more than able to gavel now, aren't I? Could sail, too. No, you got no reason to keep me. Perhaps there is something else you wish to ask of our guest before she... Departs from us. Me and my crew were adept. Alert. Always. No. Weren't no one gonna get the jump on us. Was some magic foul. Just sudden night. The winds died. 
the waters fell flat and the air got heavy. They turned sky and the sea both against us. Then this thick fog roiled up at midday. Without a sound, the spectre ship skimmed right out. It was too late. We couldn't outsail it. Calling me Craven? <laughs> sure, I am. Took a knock in and I was out for a while. When I came to, they were eating Ganasco, our steward. I dropped a dinghy and rode for it. Don't know why they didn't give chase. Don't much care me. She belongs to Aldis, who undoubtedly will come to claim her soon. But that is a problem for another time. One moment, Watcher. Looks like we'll be making a salty grog sucking cur of this one yet. Mind the manner in which you address me, ship hunter. Allow me to cut to the heart of it. Lucia Rivan, whose flag flies atop our spectral ship, was our Dakotsi Paladin, who died more than 200 years ago. It is my hope that uncovering the details regarding dear Rivan's fate in life may illuminate the nature of her undeath and how to defeat her galleon. Unfortunately, the only soul who could possibly shine more light on our situation lies buried deep within Neketaka. One Isir the Berethian, now well rotted, I presume. By all accounts, our Rivan was a Dorkotsi paladin who sailed to the Deadfire in order to safeguard a royal weapon of Old Velia. The paladins of the Darkotsi were legendary in their time. Indeed. She is the epitome of Grand Velia, of magnificence, honor, and duty. Living or undead, she strives still to serve her charge. And yet, we know not why, but a Baratheon priest called Isir opposed Arrivan and fiercely. They fought to the death, Rivan's to be precise, in this very archipelago. Along with her life, Rivan lost the sword she had sworn to protect. It has, lamentably, remained unfindable since. I believe it may be why she searches the seas yet. Regrettably, I know little but this. He was an Adiran warrior priest of Bereth, and a significantly fervent one, if tales are to be believed. He chased our Dakotsi to the Deadfire, hunting her to... well, to her death. Shortly after slaughtering our brave paladin, the priest died, possibly of sickness, or perhaps from a festering battle wound. He was entombed in honor of his service to Bereth in the Kataka's sacred stair. Indeed, I do. Though I and mine cannot so openly venture into the depths of Neketaka, nor can we commune with the dead, you, Watcher, are adept in both of these areas, correct? You must search the temple of Berath on Neketaka's sacred stair. Isaiah's tomb within it should contain a chronicle for how and where he slayed our paladin, Rivan. Gelarde! Do return when you've any lead that may navigate us to where the floating hangman anchors. I will be waiting. Gelarde, such a solace it is to see you again. I am listening, Aimika. What weighs on your mind in this moment, Casita? By all means, I would happily entertain any further questions you may have. Come, let us share a fine conversation. 
Who better to ask than the first chair and highest rank on the Consuelo, Miss Casitas? Ark, what is it you wish to know? We are a magnificent but largely landless people, so we have come to own the sea. To survive, we must seize prosperity where we can. It will not always be so, but it is for now. Ark, what is it you wish to know? Indeed, Aimika, you are correct in this assessment. We are descended from refugees who fled during Old Velia's decline. They sailed the Eastern Reach to the Deadfire. But they did not settle the islands. Today, even, our shipboard life continues. Ark, what is it you wish to know? What matters is not who they were, Gazida, only that we took it from them. But, as you are curious, I will tell you this. The architecture of Balefire Beacon suggests dwarven craftsmanship. My own research into the island upon which I established Dunwich paints these ruins in a picture of blood and agony. Whatever dwarves sought to make their refuge here were exterminated by a crush of Naga tidal waves and great sea monsters all at once. Fortuitously for us, Ondra shelters her loyal sailors more than wayward mountain dwarves. Ark, what is it you wish to know? Come, let us share a fa- Amika, do you know how I have lived so long in this life of piracy? You may already be aware, but I am a Dokotsi paladin, the first chair on the Consuelo, and my crews have been known to call me the last Marchesso. Contrary to popular belief, I do not overly favor speaking of myself. Gores, watcher.
Welcome back, welcome back. It is a pleasure to see you once again. Tell me, how is the sailing? Smooth? Nothing to delay your expedition, I hope. How might I assist you? Ah, how exciting! Let's see here. Goodness, that's not what I was expecting. And so close to Port Maggi. You've done wonderfully. Ah, oh, this book will be the best thing since Cassini's adventures, and that was all romantic rubbish. Here, your pay, my friend. We're only getting started, of course. There's more to see. Tikawara next, I think. How does that strike you? It's a little Juana village out to the southeast. Three islands this time, all nameless and unloved. They form a little triangle around Tikawara, if you squint. I'll be waiting. My little pra- Thank you. 